First off, Lorenzo, thank you for your time. I know you're really busy. I know we're, uh, we're already busy, honestly. I, say, I know um, you got a lot of stuff that uh, you know, uh, you got a busy schedule, you got a lot on your plate. So I gotta thank you for, for your time. And again, uh, I know you I mean you're all over the place in Paradise City because you're acting, you're producing, you're obviously also casting, and we gotta talk about that because I'm a wrestling fan. So I got a lot, a lot of stuff that we gotta talk about. And and I when I was talking about lady on the on the series, which is I saw it from beginning to end. I couldn't stop watching. It's so good. And the, the ending just blew my mind in so many ways. But you know what I'm talking about. So um, uh, I, think, uh, I think the first question has to be, again, you're, you're wearing so many roles. You're jumping in so many hats. You're producing. You're writing. You're also dealing, you know, you, you had some say on the casting side. Uh, you're yeah. a rocker like myself, which is also good. The music also plays a role. Everything. In, in here it feels like a passion project for yourself. So how did you came into this project? How, what, you know, what brought you into the project? Well, um, the, the creator Ash is a good friend of mine and he pretty much, you know, he used to be my agent for my band Sworn Enemy years ago. So he was always, you know, a fan of, of, of what I was doing. So we were always working together. So he knew that I lived this world too. You know, I lived in, I was, you know, we, we both come from the music business. So, you know, and we've done movies before together. So we, we just partnered up and he was the creator and I, you know, I became on to produce and act and, and, and help write. And that's my, a lot of my producing duties were, you know, throughout the creative side and, you know, the post-production side, obviously, and the casting side was a, was a, was a, was a major part of it. You just said it right there. You just basically summed up everything that you did on the show. You you that you acted, you produced. How were you? How did you? And I, I, I gotta ask this because I wanna know how were you able to balance everything? Because there are different hats. This is a show that I mean, it, it really is. It's really good. The story is really good. The acting is really good. There are a lot of. There's a lot of heart and there's a lot of. There are those situations that going on when I went through the spoilers that are really relatable, even if for people that are not on the business and they're not in this, you know, Hollywood style of lifestyle. So how were you able to manage everything, the writing side? I mean, that's really a big, a big responsibility also. Well, um, when, when Ash asked me to come on board and work with him, you know, I, I pretty much, you know, we already had a lot of the ideas. We lived a lot of the stuff that's on camera, you know, especially from my side, you know, from the, the overall world and the Simon world, that was, you know, a lot of me and Ash's life. Um, and, you know, all the writing was, you know, kind of like in our lives already. It was in our blood. So it, it kind of came easier than, you know, if we wanted to write, um, you know, something about, you know, a bunch of rappers on tour or a bunch of like, uh, you know, freestyle or, or reggaeton or something like that. We right. couldn't, couldn't relate to what goes on. It's a similar world, but it's not the same tone. If you think, you know, so we lived it and we knew that we could tell it the best that we could, that would speak to the rockers and the metal audience. And, you know, that being said, um, you know, I had, it was a lot because I had a lot of hats to wear and, you know, and, and there was times when I was ready to act and I was in my, in my gear and I'm ready to go. And, you know, then I got to worry about wardrobe or something's going crazy with one of the actors, nobody wants, and, and then, and then takes you out of character. So it was not, it's not the easiest to try to wear all those hats, but it's doable because you can do anything you want. You just got to want to do it and do it. It's all about execution. And I think we did it. You know, we did a really, Powerful job, you know. I, I I completely agree with you. I think I I couldn't stop watching this. I I, I watched the first episode and then I didn't. I just couldn't stop. Just had to watch them all from when, when, from beginning to end. I binged them all. I have they, they, they had I had no options. I want to talk a little about the casting because the casting is really good. But I want I think the music plays a bigger role in the story of the, of the characters and the and 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 their and well and the, and the story of the of the of the, of the series itself. Obviously, as you said, we are well tailored to metal and rock music. I love it. I love all music. You know, you have to listen to my body. I'll listen to my body. I don't. I don't mind, right? But um, you know, rock has. You know, it can be. You know, it can be hard, but at the same time, it has. It has melodies. It has. 
is, sure. is there's a story and there's a there's something behind there's a plot behind the the song and I think the one of the things that stood out to me when I, when I finished watching the TV series was the story, score everything I mean from beginning to end each song to me I felt related relatable to it how much how much do you have a play on it and how, and, and and how did those songs came about how how were how much did they, did you have a play on okay this song should go here and there and and etc. Well, the, a lot of the music um, obviously is in-house within Sumerian Records, so we was able to, you know, cherry pick our own bands, and we wanted to keep it, you know, within the family of of our world and still cater to the to the tone of the the show. But um, you know, the score was done by Isabella Summers, and I and I brought her in. And Isabella is, you know, um, she was just nominated for an Emmy for Little Fires Everywhere, mm -hmm. and she is the one who started Florence and the Machine. She is the machine, Isabella the machine. So bringing her to compose was, um, you know, I met her through my friend Christian Pascal, and she was, you know, uh, laughing because I had the uh, uh, the Italian stallion shirt on, a jacket on from Rocky, and. Uh, and she goes, the Italian stallion. Yeah, and she was like, who, she, I was like, I got a TV show you should score. She thought I was lying, you know what I mean? She thought, <laughs> I was like, okay. uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not, I'm serious. And um, she, uh, she came on board and it took a while, but um, Ash was really, obviously, very heavy, heavily influenced as a creator to, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of, the music choices and placements. And we had, you know, a music editor, a supervisor who helped, you know, everything to flow well. But, you know, it, in a nutshell, Ash was really the most creative on the music side because it's all his bands. He knows what he wanted for each scene. You know, I chimed in and had ideas. Um, I came up with the idea of covering Queen's right for the girls, you know, and when they wrote that, that's how that band started. I came up with the idea of starting covering this, this, this song um, I don't believe in love because I love that song, but I was, I always thought it was weird that a guy would sing it. You know, I says, what if a girl sings it? We should have a girl. And that's how the Mavens really started to become a thing because I would, we, we just started to piece it together while we was in the middle of writing. We wanted to, you know, it was, it, it, it all morphed into what it is, you know? So it's, it's just a lot of little innuendos and things like that, that help create the world that we have. But you know, the, the flux, musically is Bad Omens and that's a Sumerian band and um, overall is, is is music from um, uh, Through Fire that's mm -hmm. a Sumerian band um, and The Relentless is The Relentless is pretty much all Sumerian artists mm -hmm. and, and Remington the singer mm -hmm. is doing what Johnny uh, which was Andy Black's voice is but he, it, it, so it's it's a hybrid of everybody to kind of cross pollinate all the people and show all the diversity and all the different, ha you know, different um, artists within our world. Yeah, I think this, yeah, I think the music I mean, just it just worked to me. Yeah, everything, the score, the the, the songs, and again, and I think it also helped out developing the characters. To me, that's also I I, I saw it. it. It helped out developing all the different characters the way the songs came out. And the, the the stories. I mean, um, I mean Johnny and 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 Lily. The relationship with Johnny and uh, Lily. Their songs play a role in the relationship. Under under relationship. So, and I think to me, what to me, I mean, the story aside, the songs and score is something that play a major role in the in the in the story for it to work. And I want to jump into the casting, the amazing casting, but we gotta say it that way. Um, but before diving into the main characters, I, 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 I'm, I'm just gonna laugh at me maybe, but I'm a huge fan of uh, WWE and AEW and all those those things that I absolutely, you know, was surprised seeing JR there and, and, and Jim Ross and seeing obviously Eva Marie. And, and uh, I've, 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 I think I've spoken maybe a couple of years ago, a couple of years back, I might say about 10 years ago, uh, spoke to JR, when I was covering some events in, in the States. Um, how did those two came about? How, because JR is not an actor itself. He's more, more of a commentator. Uh, or obviously they're doing act, they're, they're basically, they're telling a story in the way, right? But, but he's not an actor itself, he did great. I mean, in my book, he did amazing. I don't know you, I don't know what you say, but he did amazing. But oh, both yeah. Marie and JR to me stood out because I saw that I was like, wait, what? what? 
Really? So how, at least the two, those two, how did, did, did the two of them came about? Who, uh, Natalie, Eva Marie? And, yeah, and Marie, yeah. Well, Natalie, Eva Marie came through me and my friend Nikki, because my friend Nikki introduced her to me and us, and then she came and auditioned for me and Ash, and, you know, and she's like a sister now, but yeah, she was, you know, we, we, we loved her from the, the WWE, because we love wrestling. We're all wrestling fans. Actually, my blood... And my tío, mi, el tío mío como un tío, porque es mi, ah. eh, mi madre es primo, okay. José Estrada, Los Boricuas. Ah, claro. En Rico Sáenz. Gacho. That's a maneco, that's my, that's family. Yeah. That's family, you know what I mean? To me, that's, you know, that goes without saying, but that's actually my mother's cousin is, is, is José Estrada. So, and mi madre de Vega Baja. Uh -huh. de Vega Baja. Claro. That's where my family's from, so. Um, that it's in our blood and Ash loves, uh, um, um, wrestling. So we, we always had wrestlers in our movies or in our first movie we did, we had JR, we had Jake the snake and we had diamond Dallas page. We had them in our first movie, me and Ash's first movie, 2015 that came out called what now, um, it's a comedy. Um, we always put wrestlers. We had stone Coast. Uh, no, we didn't have stone. I wish. We had um, uh, Goldberg, another, uh, he's very, 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 another icon like uh, Stone Cold. We had him in, um, in our movie, American Satan. So, and we, and JR wasn't in American Satan, but I think he was the only wrestler in American Satan. So that's the spinoff of American Satan is pretty much Paradise City. Mm -hmm. And then we, can, we wanted to continue the wrestling legacy, but I came out here to wrestle first. Um, yeah, so. Um, really? Yeah, Ash asked me to come here and was like, you know, make me, we'll make you a wrestler, like, because you're Puerto Rican, Italian from Queens, we can make you like The Rock from Puerto Rico or whatever, you know, and, and I, I came and trained with Rikishi and Gangrel, and that's who I learned with for a year and a half, but I didn't love the business. I fell on my head two times, and then Jose Estrada, I called Maneco, I said, Maneco, he says, yo, you start, I started at 36, he goes, you're crazy. He said, I started at 20, I didn't get on the WWF until I was 27, first time on TV. He says, you're crazy. Don't, he says, it's a, it's a long ride. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of different moments where I was like, eh, should I really try at 36? Even DD, DDP was like, I started at 35. I started, but I wanted more. I wanted to act and write and produce. And now it's all happening. So yeah. it took some time, but you know, it's in my blood. So, you know, and, 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 and Maneco put over a lot of people he put over the, the ultimate warrior on the on the mm -hmm. wwf the first time in like 80 something as the dingo warrior that's an awesome i, I mean honestly that's an awesome story i'm a huge fan of the and mostly AEW now that's mostly what i watch i don't have four hours in my life to be watching three hours of raw and two hours of smackdown so um it's too much it's too much time so i i just i had to ask because it just stood out to me yeah, I found it interesting and funny seeing uh, Jr. and and and, and, and Natalie Eva Marie uh, in there. Um, now let's talk about the main cast itself. It's big from the uh, from you know Bella and Andy, uh, you know, Ryan. I mean uh, Cameron. How were you guys were able to get all? all in my book, all those people were were busy. How how you know how was, did that casting came about? <sighs> You know, because also people are like everywhere. We called it the casting couch. Me and Ash were on the couch every day working from his house, or when we was in Tahoe working and writing and coming up with you know offers, sending out emails, and and you know the the first fifteen people we casted was just off the casting couch. You know, like sending offers to Cameron. Cameron's never played a, a role like that, so you know immediately he read it. And he engaged, and then um, you know, with Dre Di Matteo, I've seen her at the Rainbow, and uh, at the Rainbow Rooms, an uh, iconic rock bar here. And I said, I said, she's a rocker. She'll love Paris. <laughs> She'll love this. She'll love this. And then and he was like, Yeah, yeah, we'll try. It. And then we sent her an offer. And then, then, then you know, Mark Boone Jr., who was already in American Satan, he was in this, and he backed it up because they did Sons of Anarchy together. And then both mm -hmm. of them got Ryan Hurst to come in because. It's a whole Sons of Anarchy reunion type thing. Bella Thorne, we sent an offer and uh, our one of our producing partners, Anthony Mastromuro, he's friends with her mother and that's how we got her. He, he recommended her and, and, and she's, she's incredible. She did um, um, uh, Cameron Boyce, uh, God rest his soul, what a, what a beautiful soul he was, this kid. 
Um, who else? Um, uh, Perry Reeves, you know, from Entourage, Reese, you know, all, all the, the, so we had the great Entourage cast and, um, Feruza Balk, you know, she's a legend, American History X, you know, uh, um, and, you know, Andy and Ben and, and James, and then a lot of the, 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 the music guys, Randy from Lamb of God, you know, they all, and Sid from Slipknot. So we had some really powerful rockers and metal head musicians or artists and Javier, Javier um, from Animals as Leaders, all, you know, pretty much iconic rock stars that we had access to and we wanted to put in the show. And obviously, you know, um, Andy was already a part of American Satan. He is, you know, the Johnny Faust. He is the face of, of, the, of the, the movie and the show mm-hmm. pretty much. So it just, it just started to, you know, accumulate from there, you know, and then, then it was just easier to get all these bigger cast members. But I think we did an incredible job, you know, by ourselves. And we had a casting director help facilitate Jamie. She did a great job. You know, we just had, you know, it was a lot of work, but it was, you know, independently done and we did something on a studio level it looks it looks like a fucking studio level yeah no i think the start i want to say the stars line and, and and everything worked out and i think that's what it came out that's what it came out on the on the on the project yeah I, and you mentioned cameron obviously you know it's it's a big he was so young and 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 so talented and again again in in this series he played so to me he played such a major role in this guy I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. He's the he's the one. Basically, he's a constant. He's he's the average person that we are all gonna look up to him in this story. And I wanna be like him. I wanna be. I wanna I wanna him to to see his his character is gonna inspire people. Obviously, yeah. um, you know what does it mean? He, you know, he, to me, he's such a big role in the in, plays such a big role in in the in the in their series. How you know what? How does it? What does it mean to for everyone? To, you know, the, for him, you know, not to have him there. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to to you know continue the story with him as you know, recasting, it's going to be, it's not going to be an easy process, but we don't want the legacy to go away. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want to, you know, have to, you know, I, I think that, you know, Ash and I had different, Ash, obviously it's, it's, you know, he's the creator, so he's going to do what, you know, he feels is best, but we've all bounced ideas off of each other. And I, you know, was always saying that we can recast, mm-hmm. obviously, cast and you know do a period of time goes by and he's now a grown man you know not a grown man but he's not an 18 17 year old mm-hmm. kid he's 20 and he looks different you know and that's a t- passage of time and the baby's bigger you know like the baby's a little older and you know whatever you know you can go into that but you know i don't know if that's going to work for ash and um but you know somehow we have to make it feel authentic and and, and as good as possible and really make sure that cameron's complimented who we replace if we was to, you know, have a season two, yeah, I won't say nothing, you know. <laughs> I, I I was about to put you on the spot, and so uh, I mean, I'm not gonna ask you. You stay right there. But I think I think everyone wants a season two. I want a season two, and I, let me just put it that way. I think that ending was so perfect. I mean, the ending in so many ways, everything. I mean, everything, the characters the way the story ended and i think everything worked so fine so good so i think you know well when i know where johnny's life's gonna go and where um lily's life's gonna go with everything that's going on so i think everyone maintain myself wants a season two so i will i will leave it up to you and ask and ask you to let, let us know when the season two comes out so I, before i let you go um for someone that hasn't given you know maybe uh paradise is amazon prime right now a chance what you know what do you think people or what what do you expect people to take you know get out from it when they see it and why should they see this the story um well i think that if you're uh, uh, into the rock or metal you know music community you'll understand what those bands go through and what their families go through to get to where they are you know and how hard it is for them to intertwine and what happens in that world And if you're not into rock and you're into other types of music, you still learn so much about the music business because it has those elements like entourage. It's entourage for the music business. It has the managers, the agents, the major label, the the independent label, the crazy, 
the crazy uh, shenanigans that goes on between all the, the people and the egos and everything. Mm -hmm. You learn so much about the business because it's really based on a lot of stuff we went through as artists. You know, I was in Sworn Enemy, so I, I was on a major label. Then I was on an independent label. I had those journeys. Ash owns a label. He has a, he, he was in a band, a singer in a band on an indie, on an independent label. He owns a, a predominant label. You know, we have Smashing Pumpkins. We have real bands. You know what I mean? Like, like, like Samaria Records is, is another animal of, you know, what a beast it is. It has, you know, it has merit to what we are speaking of or what we're doing with Paradise City, where you can see how authentic and how much realism we have inside this uh, this uh, world we've we we've, we've all created, but um, I think you can get education, um, and you know a lot of mistakes what not to do when you're starting a band or you want to get into any kind of you know entertainment. I think it all kind of intertwines and has very much similarities. I want to. I'm just going to add that to me. Just give it a chance because it's more goes goes beyond just music. It's just to me, it's a business. And to me, that's this is what is to me. I saw it as a business class. You're gonna understand how the business where the industry works, and you can take something from it. And that's the way that I I see that the way that I saw it when I when I finished watching it. again. Lorenzo, I don't I don't want to let you go without letting me know if you have something new going on that you want maybe our people to keep an eye on. Oh, so just, yeah. Just let me know if you have something that might, but there, there are fans. You just, what else can we work at? Where else can we find Lorenzo coming soon, maybe? Well, well, I just finished a Bruce Willis movie called Reactor with Patrick Muldoon, Bruce Willis, yeah. and um, and Matthew Marsden. Um, that's that we shot in February. I got another, another, another big movie that I'm going to shoot. I can't say the cast yet, but that I'm leaving in two weeks for. So I'll give you an update on that. Uh, the free fall is going to come out in, um, um, I believe, in, in 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 Halloween. We're pushing for Halloween. Okay. That is uh, uh, one of the um, one of the producers from Get Out and Andrea Lando. She's a La Mexicana de 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 de, de hey. Marcos, Narcos. She was, you know, the other mm -hmm. team. Um, and uh, Sean Ashmore. He's from um, uh, X Men. So I play opposite them, in so, in this horror movie called The Free Fall. That's coming out in Halloween. Um, shooting a movie um, called Black Helmet with Danny Trejo, um, uh, Gabriel Shavara. Um, Shavara, I believe it's Shavara, right? Yeah. 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 But Gabriel Shavara, I don't want to sound like I messed up the name. Um, uh, Gina Gershon, um, Bianca, I, I'm, I'm, I'm spacing on the cast, but um, yeah. Bianca, what was her last name? Bianca, Bianca, Bianca. I mean, I'm, I'm messing this up now. Uh -oh. <laughs> Good. You're staying busy. You're staying busy. Staying That's busy. a good thing. Yeah, yeah, we're staying busy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bill Mosley, and we're out to a big actor right now to finish the pieces. And I'm playing Gabriel Shavara's brother. He's in Salina. He was in. He's he's uh, in Low Riders. He's the lead in Low Riders and Planet of the Apes. He's in one of the, he's in one of the the, the, the the Planet of the Apes. I think from 2017, War of the Planet of the Apes. Um, and um, I am, I have a lot of other stuff that I can't talk about, but um, yeah, you could see me. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of good stuff. You're busy. That's good. I like that. I like that you just, you're being busy. I, I, I really, I wish the best for you. Again, congratulate you. I got to congratulate you on the, on the TV series. And I just seen the two of you that are amazing job, the casting, everything. Everything just worked. That's, no complaints. I really got no complaints. And again, I got to thank you for your time and for the thank interview. You. Thank you.